Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. Today, I'm working in the hospital with my husband, Mark. Well, hey guys, I'm Mark, and I'm going to be covering hospitalists this week in Sault Ste. Marie. We fly up here to help out with a doctor shortage, so let's grab some breakfast and head to the hospital. Sounds good. So on the menu this morning is my personal specialty, proats. Okay, I realize this might not look like the most appetizing breakfast, but trust me, it's delicious. <laughs> All right, it's time to go. You ready? Yeah, just about. <laughs> <Massive. laughs> oh, it's the hospital. Hi, this is Dr. Deshauer. Uh, oh, 60 over 43. Did you repeat that, like, on the other arm? Okay, and he's still conscious? Okay, uh, I'm not in the hospital right now. Uh, can you start by giving him one liter of IV fluid bolus? I'm gonna call the ICU so that they can be there right now. Um, and as soon as I get to the hospital, I will come right uh, to the bedside, okay? Yeah, give me a call back if you need. Thank you so much. All right, I'm just being put through to ICU. Hi, yes, this is Siobhan. Um, I'm currently covering Jim Yu. Um, I'm hoping you can see a patient for me. Um, I was just called about a patient who was hypotensive with a blood pressure of 60 over 43. I'm not currently in the hospital right now. I'm in, I'm driving right now. Um, but I'm wondering if you could see him. Thank you. Okay, I'll meet you at the bedside. Oh my gosh, okay, this feels so weird. I think this is the first time I've ever had like an acutely unwell patient when I'm called about them when I'm not in the hospital. It's just such an unsettling feeling not to be in the hospital right now. And I'm really glad you're driving. Yeah, I'll be just a few minutes. Okay, I'm gonna head right upstairs. All right. I'll meet you after. Sounds good, let me know if you need help. Okay, thanks. Rushing into the room, I find the ICU doctor and two ICU nurses at the bedside. They gave me an update. After one liter of fluids, his systolic blood pressure was still very low in the 70s. They gave him Tazacin, a broad spectrum antibiotic, and sent off stat blood work. Minutes after I arrive, we get the results. High lactate, high white blood cell count, and a high creatinine. He's in septic shock. Likely a complication from the procedure he had yesterday, a nephrostomy tube placement. This is where a thin tube is inserted through the back and into the kidney. In this case, it was done because there was a blockage in the ureter, causing a buildup of pressure in the kidney. So now we're giving norepinephrine to raise the patient's blood pressure and transfer him to the ICU for close monitoring. Okay, patient is in ICU, at least a little bit more stable. How has your morning been? Oh, it's been actually quite interesting. I wanted to show you a chest x-ray. Let's go take a look. Okay, yeah. I'm so intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep, <laughs> out in the wild. <laughs> okay guys, this is something you read about and people quiz you on in medical school, but you never think you're ever gonna see in real life, at least not me. <laughs> this, wait, let's see if you guys can guess. Look at this image. What is abnormal? This is something called dextrocardia. Dextrocardia with situs inversus is when the heart is on the right side of the chest rather than on the left where it usually is. It's like a mirror image. And for some people, even their internal organs like their stomach and liver are also on the opposite side. And it's usually discovered when someone gets a chest x-ray, like Mark's patient, or when they get an ECG, which also looks slightly backwards. Hi Siobhan, I just had a concern about a patient. It looks like he keeps going into a rapid, irregular heart rhythm on the telemetry and converts back to a normal rhythm. It's very strange. I was wondering if you'd have a look at it with me. Is he stable? He's stable. He's asymptomatic. He said he feels great. Other vitals are good. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, which room is it? This is 308. Okay. That is such a strange rhythm. It doesn't look compatible with life. I need to go actually see this patient. This is the heart rhythm we see on the monitor. You can see a normal heart rhythm tracing followed by a shockingly fast electrical impulse. And this keeps alternating back and forth. Oh my gosh, you will not believe this. So the patient was using one of those Dr. Ho's machines on his feet that's marketed to help with circulation. And the heart monitor was actually picking up the electrical signal. I can't believe it, I've never even heard of that happening. I've got to find Merck and see what he thinks. I wanna quiz him. Okay, here it is. What do you think? What? <laughs> That can't be real. <laughs> Must be some sort of artifact. 
Yeah. Okay. What is it? You will never guess what type of artifact. It's one of those Dr. Ho devices. You know when you put your feet on it and... Oh, the foot zapper. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, new thing on the differential diagnosis. Hi, it's Dr. Royal speaking. I'll put in the orders for the potassium shift and I'll be right over. So this is a patient who came in and he was extremely dehydrated. And he has what we call an acute kidney injury. Now, when the kidneys aren't working as well, the potassium can build up in the blood and that can cause a fatal arrhythmia. So that's really what we're trying to prevent here. The first and most important step is giving IV calcium to stabilize the heart muscle. This doesn't actually lower the potassium, but does prevent fatal arrhythmias like this one. And then Sydney is going to give some medications to lower the potassium. Yeah, so we're using 50 mils of dextrose first over five minutes and then 10 units of insulin right after. And then we're going to do a Ventolin nebulizer and then she's going to drink this KX late and I'll shift her potassium back down. So I'm really hopeful that his kidneys will perk up with the fluids that I'm giving him, but if not, we're going to have to consider dialysis. Well, when you don't have time to make a real lunch, there's always a protein shake. It's true. <laughs> no, but seriously, I feel like this week is our second week in the Sioux. I feel a little bit more settled, like I know the hospital better. We're a little bit more efficient, like getting yeah. out a little bit earlier. I mean, for me, it's a massive improvement. We've actually seen the sun this time and it's <laughs> beautiful. Just oh feel the gosh. sun on your skin. Do you remember we were out at like 9 p.m. last time? It's true. We were here like every single day. It's true. And then on the last day, I'm pretty sure I was still charting until midnight. <laughs> so next month, we're coming back for two weeks this time. And it's going to be the first time that I'm doing a 24 hour call shift seeing patients in the emergency department since residency. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, you remember, I promised I was never going to do this again. I thought I'm not going to be sleep deprived. Yep. It's not worth yep. it. I remember I was there. <laughs> and here I am. And yet they rope you back they in. They rope you back in. I have to say, I'm a little bit nervous, especially being like doing it for as an independent doctor for the first time. Yeah, you should it's subscribe. Gonna <laughs> it's going to be great. Subscribe. Subscribe <laughs> and come on this crazy adventure with me next time. Okay, I think we should go back up. But on the yeah. way, do you think we should get something nice for the nurses? Oh, I'm I just, love that idea. I'm just so grateful. They've been awesome. Yes. Um, they've really made this week go smoothly. I think only Tim's is open today. Yeah, it's typical. Yeah, Classic. Tim Hortons or bust. T Tim Hortons yeah. or bust. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, so I just saw a patient with pneumonia and when she first came in, her blood work looked like she might have some liver disease. She had low albumin, low platelets, and her liver enzymes were quite high. So I had ordered an abdominal ultrasound to look and see if she had signs of liver cirrhosis, which is basically when the liver gets damaged over time and it forms scar tissue and it stops working properly. So I was explaining this to the patient, saying we just have to wait for the ultrasound report to come from radiology. And then she just like whipped out her phone and said, no, I have it right here. <laughs> I was taken so off guard uh, because when I last checked, it wasn't up, but she has access to an online chart, like the hospital chart. And luckily her liver looked okay. So it was good news. But it was kind of cool. I really think this is a way that everyone can be on the same page and patients can have all the information. So I really like this. But why did this happen? Why was the blood work unusual? I think it's because she was so sick when she came in that the infection made her albumin and the platelets low and she probably wasn't getting enough blood to her liver. So that's why the enzymes were high. So luckily, no major liver disease. All right, so that's a wrap and we're flying home tomorrow morning. So don't forget to subscribe and that way, we'll see you in the next video. So, so bye, bye for, for now. now.